The gnome professor, Dr. Gerbil Argon, once presented a theory, dubbed the Law of Diminishing Probabilities, to the Fairy Psych Brotherhood. Argon's law states that the more unusual the subjects involved in a conflict, the more improbable the resolution to that conflict will be. It is possibly the vaguest behavioural theory ever to make it into a journal, and it is really more of a notion than a law. But in the case of the Foul Twins' first magical adventure, it would certainly prove to be accurate, as we will see from the hugely improbable finale to this tale. The law's requirements were certainly fulfilled, as this day was, without doubt, one for unusual individuals. An immortalist duke, a miniature troll, and a set of fraternal human twins, the first a certified genius with a criminal leaning lurking in his prefrontal cortex, and the second possessed of a singular talent that had been hinted at but not fully explored as yet. There are two additional unusual individuals still to join the tale. The nun interrogator, to whom we have already alluded, will presently make one of her trademark theatrical entrances, but the next unusual individual to join our cast protagonists is more than simply unusual. She is biologically unique. And she made her appearance from above, hovering 30 feet over Dorky Island. This unusual individual was Lower Elements Police Specialist Lazuli Heights, who, five minutes earlier, entered the island's airspace to complete a training maneuver in the foul safe zone. Usually, such safe zones were in remote areas, but in rare cases where there was a special arrangement with the human occupants, a zone could be closer to civilization and provide more of a challenge for the specialists. A case in point being Dorky Island, where Artemis Fowl II, friend to the LEP, had guaranteed safe passage for fairies. From a human perspective, Lazuli was unusual simply by virtue of being an invisible flying fairy. But from a fairy perspective, LEP Specialist Heights was unusual because she was a hybrid. That is to say, a crossbreed. Hybrids are common enough among the fairy folk, especially since the families were forced into close quarters underground. But even so, they are each and every one idiosyncratic. For all hybrids are as unique as snowflakes, and the manifestation of their magical abilities is unpredictable. In Lazuli Heights's case, her magic had resolutely refused to manifest itself in any shape or form. Lazuli's particular category of hybrid was known as a pixel, that being a pixie elf cross. There were other species in the ancestral DNA mix too, but pixie and elf accounted for over 95% of her total number of nucleotides. And even though both pixies and elves are magical creatures, not a single spark of power seemed to have survived the crossbreeding. In height, Specialist Heights followed the pixie type, at barely 32 inches tall, but her head adhered to the elfin model, and was smaller than one might expect to see on a pixie's shoulders, with the customary elfin sharp planes of cheekbone, jaw, and pointed ear. This was enough to give her away as a hybrid to any fairy who cared to look, and just in case there was any lingering doubt, Lazuli's skin and eyes were the aquamarine blue of Atlantean pixies but her hair was the fine flaxen blonde associated with Amazonian elves. Scattered across her neck and shoulders was a mottling of yellow arrowhead markings, which, according to paleofatumologists, had once made Amazonian elves look like sunflowers to airborne predators. Unless that elf is a hybrid with blue skin, Lazuli often thought, which ruins the effect. All this paleofatumological knowledge only meant one thing to Lazuli, and that was that her parents had probably met on vacation, which was about the sum total of her knowledge on that subject, aside from the fact that one or both of them had deserted her on the north corner of a public square, after which the orphanage administrator had named her Lazuli Heights. I changed the spelling, and there you have it, the administrator had told her. It's my little game, which worked out well for you. Not so much for Walter Cooler or Vishnu Restroom. 
The Sprite administrator had a human streak and often made barbed remarks along the lines of, The lapis lazuli is a semi-precious stone. Semi-precious hybrid. I think your parents must have been thinking along those lines, or you wouldn't have ended up here. The administrator chuckled dryly at his own tasteless joke every single time he cracked it. Lazuli never even smiled. It was exceedingly exasperating for a pixel not to possess the magical phenotypic trait, especially since her driving ambition was to achieve the rank of captain in the Leprechaun, a post where abilities such as the Mesmer, invisibility and healing powers would most certainly prove to be boons. Fortunately for Heights, her obdurate streak, sharp mind and dead eye with an oxalis pistol, had so far carried her through two years of intense training in the LEP Academy and now to specialist duty in a safe zone. Lazuli did suspect that her academy application might have been bolstered by the LEP's minority inclusion policy. And Lazuli certainly was a minority. Her DNA profile breakdown was 42% elf, 53% pixie, and 5% undeterminable. Unique. The evening's exercise was straightforward. Fairies were secreted around the island, and it was her mission to track them down. These were not real fairies, of course. They were virtual avatars that could be tagged by passing a gloved hand through holograms projected by her helmet camera. There would be clues to follow. Chromatographic reactions, tracks, faint scents, and a learned knowledge of the species' habits. Once she punched in, Specialist Heights would have 30 minutes to tag as many virtual fugitives as she could. Before Lazuli could so much as repeat the mantra that had sustained her for many years and through several personal crises, which happened to be small equals motivated, a pulsating purple blob blossomed on her visor's display. This was most unusual. Purple was usually reserved for live trolls. Perhaps her helmet was glitching. This would not be in the least surprising, as Academy equipment was always bottom of the priority list when the budget was being carved up between departments. Lazuli's suit was threadbare and ill-fitting, and packed with weapons that hadn't been standard issue in decades. She blinked at the purple blob to enlarge it, and realised that there was indeed a troll on the beach, albeit a tiny one. The poor fellow was smaller than her, though he did not seem as intimidated by the human world as she was. I must rescue him, Lazuli told herself. This was undoubtedly the correct action, unless this troll was involved somehow in a live manoeuvre. Lazuli's angel mentor, who directed the exercise from Haven City, had explicitly and repeatedly ordered her never to poke her nose into an operation. There are two types of fast-track specialist heights the angel had said only this morning. The fast track to the top and the fast track out the door. Poke your nose into an operation where it doesn't belong and guess which track you'll be on. Lazuli didn't need to guess. A thought occurred to her. Could it be that the coincidental appearance of a troll on this island was her stinkworm? This was very possible, as LEP instructors were a sneaky bunch. A specialist's metal was often stress-tested by mocking up an emergency and observing how the cadet coped. Rookies referred to this testing as being thrown a stinkworm, because, as every fairy knew, if a person was thrown an actual stinkworm and they mishandled it, there would be an explosive, viscous and foul-smelling outcome. There was a legend in the academy about how one specialist had been dropped into the crater of an apparently active volcano to see how he would handle the crisis. The specialist in question did not respond with the required fortitude and was now wanding registration chips in the traffic department. Lazuli had no intention of wanding chips in traffic. This could be my stinkworm, she thought. In which case, she should simply observe, as her angel would be keeping a close eye or it could be a genuine operation, in which case she should most definitely steer clear as there would be LEP agents in play. But there was a third option. Option C. Was it possible that the fowls were running an operation of their own here? 
The human, Artemis Fowl, had a checkered history with the people. If that were the case, then she should rescue the toy troll, who was perhaps six feet away from two children her facial recognition software labelled as Miles and Beckett Fowl.